One of, great, one of the great problems with um, our society is its disregard for the basic meaning of words. And I, I, I think it's been emphasised recently by a number of high-profile, casual use of words. So, for example, uh, James Cleverly talks about... Um, a drug which he describes as the date rape drug, or rather Rishi Sunak describes it as such and says he's not going to take any further action. Actually, it's not a date rape drug. It's a rape drug. Rehypnol. It's a rape drug. The date bit is unnecessary. It's just something that sort of dampens the impact of the real purpose of that drug, of the real use of that drug in practice. So we are dressing words up to mean something that isn't quite, something that is tamer than they actually mean. And when we come to the word abhorrent, the word abhorrent is a very interesting word because it comes directly from Latin. It gives us the word horror, um, I'm, uh, horere. It comes from the Latin word horere, which means to shudder. So horror, the, that, that English word, the horror film, is a film that makes you shudder. Something which is abhorrent, ab means away from, uh, you, you, you are shuddering away from something. Something is abhorrent. It, it's, it's a very clear statement of disgust and shock. So when uh, the head of Harvard University, Claudine Gay, uh, made such an extraordinary statement about anti-Semitism. She said, um, uh, she, she, she's just resigned, by the way, but she said uh, she was president for six months and she was the first black president. She was the second woman president to be appointed to the university and she has survived slightly longer than Liz Truss survived in the British Parliament. Uh, she has been monumentally useless. And why? Because she didn't take the meaning of words seriously. Not dissimilar, actually, to Liz Truss. It's got nothing to do with gender, nothing to do with colour. It's to do with the meaning of words. And in her case, she caused particular dismay and shock by her statement that um, she said that People who called for the killing of Jews were abhorrent. It was abhorrent to call for the killing of Jews. I think we agree with that, absolutely. But then she went on and she said that it would depend on the context whether such comments would constitute a violation of Harvard's Code of Conduct regarding bullying and harassment. Well, surely, if you say something which is designed to make you shudder from the person who is speaking, then you are saying something that is fundamentally detestable, fundamentally bullying, fundamentally harassing. And so you can't use the two, the two expressions. The two parts of her statement were contradictory. I welcome her resignation. I'm not, I'm not in the States in a way. I, it doesn't bother me. Uh, but I welcome her resignation. It's not because... Um, it's a it's a slap in the face uh, for, 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 for for people who are um, being anti-Semitic. I think anti-Semitism is wrong. But I think in this particular case, Claudine Gay demonstrates that she doesn't have the academic and linguistic capacity to lead one of the great universities. If she can't see that those two statements don't cohere, if she can't see that those two statements are contradictory, then she is not capable of leading a major university. She is, in other words, stupid. And I can't imagine why it should have taken her so long to decide to resign. She should have been resigning within five minutes, having said something so monumentally ridiculous. Or she should simply have said, I didn't mean that. I was stupid.
We can all be stupid for a moment, but it only takes a few minutes afterwards to recognise that you've said something inappropriate. In the same way, James Cleverly, all he had to do was read the room, the room full of um, <laughs> predominantly female journalists, and he was making a joke about rape. And he was making a joke on the same day that, uh, that, that there were new laws going out. And he was saying, well, just a small amount of this drug isn't going to do any harm. Just utter, utter, utter madness. It's not about whether or not he is um, condoning the use of this drug, really. It's not even about whether he's condoning um, the abuse of women. Both are detestable. Both. Both that sort of language, both the language can, uh, the misogyny implicit in his joke, as well as the illegality implicit in his joke, but the fact that he cannot see that that joke in itself was inappropriate for a minister of the crown. The fact that he cannot see that makes it quite clear to me that he should not be in the position that he's got. It's not dissimilar, actually, to uh, the view I took when um, Suella Braverman stood at the dispatch box and screamed, Invader. And then later on went to attack uh, Pakistan. A senior minister to embrace such undiplomatic language in the heart of Parliament in the chamber of the House of Commons, should not be a minister. Should not, I think, be an MP. So, all of this is about language and about a failure in language and a failure to respect the importance of language. Language is important. As I say, we can all make mistakes. In which case, we... Um, own up to them quickly. We get out a, um, an, an, an apology. But to linger for so long as Claudine Gay has done before she finally hands in her resignation, a resignation was not necessary. What was necessary was a little bit of education.